Hi everyone, welcome to Pal to Tech. Well, today is the day. This is it. No more rumors, no more speculating, no more guessing. Fujifilm just announced the official details of the brand new X-T4 camera. I've divided this video into four distinct parts. New features and highlights, design and ergonomics, new video features, and my final thoughts on today's announcement. So, without any further ado, let's get straight into it. The new Fujifilm X-T4 camera will cost $1,700. It's available for pre-order right now, and I have a link down below. And it will be released on April 30th, this year. The X-T4 comes with the same 26.1 megapixel X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor, the same one that the X-T3 has. And that's just fine with me for two reasons. First, it's an amazing sensor. And second, there's so much more to a digital camera than just the sensor. Now, in addition to shooting RAW and JPEG files, the camera will now allow a new 8 or 16-bit RGB TIFF file format option. Now, the pixel dimension options of these recorded images to the SD cards will be the exact same as the X-T3. You know, the S, M, and L sizes, with the largest size being 6,200 240 pixels by 4160 pixels. Also new, when shooting RAW is selected, you can now choose between a non-reversible compressed option and a normal lossless compressed. I'm not sure why the hell you'd want to do that, but hey, it's an option. Here's the first major new feature. Let's talk battery life. We have a brand new, completely different and much more powerful battery called the NPW235. The new battery looks like this and now goes up to 2350 milliamps. Translation, you go from getting about 390 shots on the X-T3 to about 500 shots on the X-T4 in normal mode. That's about one and a half times the battery life of the X-T3's battery. And if you use the battery grip, which allows for two additional batteries, you're looking at getting over 1,500 shots without having to change out the batteries. The battery charger now charges two batteries at once and shows you the levels remaining right on the charger itself. Very cool. Next up on the list is the shutter. Fujifilm has increased the actuations and it's now at 300,000, which is twice as much as the X-T3. It's also quieter, 30% quieter. And it's also faster, they've sped it up, they've sped it up. The mechanical shutter has increased from 11 frames per second to 15 frames per second in burst mode, while the electronic shutter is 30 frames per second with a 1.25 crop factor that's blackout free. All the other shutter items such as shutter speed, maximums, mechanical, electronic, e-front curtain, options, all that stuff, they're all pretty much the same specs as on the X-T3. The sync speed for the flash will also remain the same at 1 250th of a second. With all that increased speed for the shutter, let's talk autofocus. The X-T4 is claiming an autofocus performance will be as fast as 0.02 seconds. They also claim that face eye auto tracking has been now I quote, dramatically improved, and are you sitting down for this one? That the tracking autofocus success rate has more than double that compared to the X-T3. Wow. <laughs> okay, this is pretty mind blowing, but I caution that this needs to be tested in the real world. But if that's true, I can hardly wait to test this out. Now, let's talk about IBIS. 
So many people have asked for it, and here it is. The XG4 provides a five axis, six and a half stop image stabilization when used with 18 out of the 29 Fujifilm lenses. These are the lenses that offer this IBIS, and here's what they offer. Apparently, this new IBIS has eight times the detection accuracy over the X-H1's IBIS. There are no springs in the IBIS mechanism. Rather, they're using magnets to make that thing work. Again, listen, I need an X-T4 in my hands ASAP to see how these rather bold claims hold up. Finally, we get to the LCD and electronic viewfinder. The resolution on the three inch LCD has been increased from 1.04 million dots to 1.62 million dots. Additionally, there are now three modes that you can set for the LCD and electronic viewfinder. There's low light priority, which allows users to see the subject clearly in low light. Resolution priority. Now what this does apparently is it enhances all of the resolution and details of the subject while you're looking through the viewfinder. And frame rate priority, which minimizes blur in the viewfinder when you're shooting a moving subject. And finally, they added a locking mechanism for the eye cup to prevent it from getting knocked or torn off. Before I get into design and ergonomics, there's a couple of other brief items. There's a new Eterna Bleach Bypass film simulation and a classic negative film simulation. White Balance now has white priority and aperture priority options in addition to auto. Highlight and shadow tones can now be adjusted by half stops. So that that'll give you some finer level of control if you use those features. There's also a new HDR mode, color effect, color chrome, blue, some kind of thing and so forth. Listen, it's late, <laughs> I'm tired and I shoot raw anyway, but it's nice to see these features added for JPEG shooters. There's a bunch of others such as clarity, extended multiple exposure bracketing. I, I Listen, I'm not gonna go over all of them, but I will have links to the Fujifilm website below. The camera will weigh slightly more than the X-T3 for a total of 607 grams. Now that includes the battery and the SD card. And the body will be just slightly larger than the X-T3. Let me show you what that looks like here. Okay, so have a look at this. As you can see, the dotted outline here is where the X-T3 body ends. And as you can see, the grip extends further out, which is actually really nice because you can get a better hold of the grip side of the camera. And as you move down the camera, you can see the outline of the X-T3 and the dotted lines. Really around the X-T4, it's pretty much the same size. Overall, the camera is really not that much larger. And from what I can see, the main size change they made was exactly where I had hoped it would be, right on that grip. I'll have a link below to the Fuji Rumors website so you can check out this photo in more detail. The X-T3 in these photographs is my X-T3, so it looks a little beat up, okay? But what I did was I took pictures of my X-T3 and I have them as a comparison to the press leaked photos of the X-T4, so you can see them compared, okay? The only main difference between the front of the X-T4 and the X-T3 is the new sync terminal cover right here, which is flatter and it looks a bit thinner than the one on the X-T3. Looking now at the right side of the camera, we can see they've taken the two compartments and merged them into one. So I'm assuming that we'll either have the SD card slots together with the remote release connector cover inside this one door housing, or they relocated the remote release connector port to the other side of the camera. Let's check out the top of the camera now where there are some major differences. First off, they relocated the top function button from between the shutter speed and exposure compensation dial to now above the exposure compensation dial. And I think this is pretty much a better place for it as I was always, you know, mashing my finger between these two dials right here trying to get to this button. I mean, to me, it makes better ergonomic sense to have it here. If you look at the ISO, shutter speed, and exposure compensation dials, you'll see that they sort of taper off. They get a bit thinner toward 
are the top of the dial. They kind of go like that. I'm not sure the reason for this change. Maybe it's just cosmetic. And this is one of those things I would really love to have the camera in front of me to see if it makes a difference, if it makes the dials easier to just manipulate. Who knows? We'll find out. Lastly, a major change is the removal of the metering mode and instead replacing it with the stills video switching function. I can see this being, along with the flippy screen, which I'll discuss in a minute, somewhat divisive for some Fujifilm users, particularly stills only photographers. The bottom of the camera is pretty similar to the X-T3. Interestingly, they shifted the battery door opening latch to side instead of top to bottom, right? Look at that difference. There's the X-T3. There's the X-T4. Looking at the back of the camera now, autofocus lock has been moved over to the left button, replacing the auto exposure lock button. Then they swapped out the Q menu button for the auto exposure lock button. Personally, I'm not thrilled with that change. First off, if anyone is holding the camera up to their, say their left eye, it may be more difficult for them to reach the auto focus on button. And second, I never use the Q menu ever at all. I, I, I never use the Q menu ever, never. Also, the top two buttons seem different. The autofocus on button is rounder and the Q one is sort of flat. And that's a good thing, I think, as you can quickly tell them apart without having to look at them. One thing that I am a bit bugged about is that the headphone jack was removed from the camera and it's only on the vertical grip. Yes, it's it's great that Fujifilm included a USB-C adapter in the box, but frankly, I am so flippin' sick of these dongles, and it's yet another thing that I'm gonna have to lose on set, so, you know, okay. And now we come to the flippy screen. This is by far the most polarizing issue for photographers, particularly those that are used to the tilt screen on the X-T2 and the X-T3. To be clear, a flip around screen was something that I personally wanted badly for the X-T4. However, I had figured that they would have gone with a similar design that was used by the X-T100. That camera has a flip around screen, but also a tilt function as well. So you, you kind of get the best of both worlds. However, from what I can see in the X-T4 product photos, it appears that Fuji went more with Canon's design with the flippy screen, sort of like this one on the 80D. See, it's like a real vlogger screen. So for example, you, if you're shooting, right, if you want to turn the camera around with this design of a flippy screen, you can just go, you know, boom, and then just shoot yourself like this, and then just kind of put it back real quick, real easy. If you're up high, you can turn it like this, but you can turn it all the way like that, which is nice if you're holding the camera up high. The only issue obviously is now the screen is sticking out this way and it's not directly underneath the viewfinder and more importantly, the lens. I don't know and I honestly, I think this screen design change would bother street photographers more than anyone else. So like, because you know, if you have the X-T3 and you've got this tilt screen, you can lift up like this Boom, you hold it in. And even more importantly for vertical shots, you can have it, you know, you can have it out like that and you can be d more discreet with it, right? So if you have the flip screen, it's gonna go out this way. But is it a big enough issue to not get the camera because of it? How fragile is the flippy screen? How much rotation does it have? And what is it actually like using on busy shoots in a variety of non-video professional shooting situations for still photography? You know, a few press release images showing this flippy screen cannot answer those questions for me. So more than anything else on this camera, except perhaps IBIS, this new screen needs to be tested and reviewed by actual users. I am surprised they did not go with the design choice of the X-T100 or some kind of way to flip it up or keeping basically the best of both worlds. So I'm reserving my final conclusion on whether or not this flippy screen's design choice is well suited for this camera until I can actually test the hell out of it for both still and video shooting situations. We will revisit the flippy screen. Next we come to video. Well, 
Unfortunately, they didn't give us 6K this time around, and that was a big disappointment for me because I really did want that for the ability to zoom crop footage down to 4K. Oh well. Maybe an X-H2 or an X-T5, it's not the end of the world. There are some really wonderful new video features in the X-T4. First off is a new electronic image stabilization function for video mode. I see this being great for weddings and events, etc., where you don't want to haul a gimbal around just to get more stable footage while walking and shooting. So you can combine this new electronic image stabilization function with the camera's new IBIS, and voila, you have the potential to use some great Fujifilm lenses previously you could never use for video, such as the 16 to 55 or the 35 millimeter prime. Fuji also has thrown in, <laughs> as an extra added bonus, a new image stabilization boost mode for stationary handheld shooting situations. Now, while the camera still keeps 4K 60p up to 400 megabits per second as its high-end video shooting mode, Fujifilm has also added a new 240 frames per second feature at full HD. Why would you need this? for awesome slow-mo footage. Now, here's a new video feature I absolutely, I love this. I love this new video feature they added. You can now simultaneously record video to both SD cards at the same time while you're shooting. Oh, the camera still offers F-Log, HLG, and both all intra and long GOP options for video recording, but now it also offers a new F-Log view assist function to correct low saturation, low contrast video while recording F-Log. One of the problems in recording F-Log is that your histogram is not actually showing your contrast and your saturation since you know you're adding a LUT later on in post-production and this can really throw things off. So by having this new F-Log view assist mode or whatever they're calling it, you now get the best of both worlds. You get the ability to shoot in F-Log as well as accurately measure your exposure saturation on the fly. This is big and I, I normally have to lug around the Atomos Ninja 5 for this function and now it's built right into the camera. They've made some other changes as well, such as a new crop magnification mode function to prevent changes to the angle of view when switching to a different video mode. And lastly, they've added an ability, a new ability, to not only support an external microphone, but also a line level input where you can connect an external audio equipment. <laughs> My head is spinning. <laughs> and then, and there's even more stuff. <sighs> Congratulations on making it this far in my video. If you're still around, I'm sure a lot of you dropped off already. <laughs> it's a long video tonight. Will it succeed? Only time will tell. Here's the good news though. Whether you love or hate this new direction that Fujifilm is going with the X-T4, I think this is a winning situation for everyone. If you love it, well, the camera's on sale right now, go order one. And if you hate it, well, you know what? The price for the X-T3, which is the best digital mirrorless camera ever created in my opinion, just went way down. So it's a win-win for everyone. Listen, there will be updates, firmware changes coming, and of course, the lenses. I think they're coming out with three new lenses or something. I'm too tired to go into the lenses and even look at the lenses right now. We'll, we'll get to that another time. A lot more to come. In the meantime, I do wanna mention something and end this video with something. Sometimes in all the hype of technology, it's easy to get carried away about gear, you know, getting the latest gear and feeling like you're at a disadvantage if you don't have the latest and greatest gear. You know, some people just bought an X-T3 last week and other people, the minute they buy the X-T4, well, Fujifilm's just gonna go out and announce the X-T5. It never ends. Being a good photographer means being able to see and instinctively know 
how to get a good shot, regardless of what kind of camera it is. The art of photography is not about gear. It's about vision, empathy, art, and the ability to see and capture the world in a unique way from a unique perspective, yours. And your vision and craft will outperform and outlast any camera model or any brand ever made now or in the future. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please give it the like and subscribe, and I will see you again in a new video soon. So long. <laughs>